In this two-part video, we will be looking at ATEM Mini Pro Control from Skahoy devices, but not only that, we'll also do it over the internet. So the challenge today is that you may be forced to wear a mask when you do your live production, but what if you could wear a different mask? What if you could actually be at a remote location when you're controlling cameras and ATEM switches elsewhere? That's what we'll be looking at in this uh, little dual episode video. The, th the fact is that we also see smaller production crews nowadays. You need to do more with less people and that requires the toolbox of Skahoy to make integrated control experiences where you can have multiple things going on from the same surface. And the Rec Fusion Live, which we will be looking at here, does exactly that. It has PDC control and it has vision mixing control and we have thrown in a few other extra things that we'll be looking at here. And you also need it to be easy. And honestly, when it comes to connectivity across the internet, I am really the network newbie. I'm the grandma of networks. So I just need a button I can push and then it works. So that's the kind of thing that we have been exploring in um, recent times as a response to, to the whole COVID-19 situation that um, challenges us to see how we can work remotely. So that means VPN, and I was on the look for a VPN for the rest of us, basically. So, And I think I found some great solutions which I want to share with you. And as I said, I want to use the RecFusion Live, which has two parts. It has a vision mixing part and it also has a PDC part. So we'll be looking at how this product can help us to do many of these things, switching, PDC camera control and also tally and um, also networking because now we are uh, working remotely. We want to turn on and off equipment on a remote basis, which is why we put in NetIO um, network control power devices to, uh, to do exactly that. And we'll also look at that in this video. So the first thing is uh, VPN for the rest of us. This is what we'll explore in uh, this video. And I want to turn your attention to my screen right now because what we see right here is and um, I want to see if I can zoom in a little bit so you can see it more closely. What we see right here is my kitchen. Okay, this is my kitchen table. I have three PDC cameras in my kitchen, a laptop connected to an ATEM mini switcher and there's a router there in the corner. But before we dive into that, let's take a look at uh, some slides that give you an overview of what we are dealing with. So, well, the current situation that you would have a school, church, conference center, a studio and the master control room at the same place. Then you have the public internet over here and this is where you stream to, but everything happens inside the blue box. In that box, we put an ATEM switcher. So that's the ATEM Mini Pro. Then we have three cameras and a laptop. They are connected by HDMI. So the ATEM Mini Pro is really great for those uh, production scenarios. HDMI only runs 10 meters or so. So there's no chance that you have a really uh, advanced setup. The, the ATEM Mini Pro needs to be on the set, but you would like to control it from elsewhere. We'll see how we do that. Now, the ATEM Mini Pro is great. It has uh, MPEG-4 recording onto a USB stick. It can even stream to the internet. But I also want to have a multi-viewer so I can run the show. So chances are that you have a screen on your set so you can sit there and press the buttons of the ATEM Mini Pro and, and look what you're doing. Now, um, you may want to have a tally system from Skahoy so that you can show your talent, what camera to look into. And you may also have a PDC Fly to control your robotic cameras. And the PDC Fly is essentially the, the right side of the RecFusion Live. So um, that makes total sense in this configuration, having them side by side. Then you have a network and they'll be on the same subnet and nothing fancy goes on. It's all connected by network cables, maybe PoE for power over ethernet, which is great. Great. And you stream to YouTube through this network switch from the ATEM Mini Pro right away. Now, the only problem is that in this scenario, you would be forced to wear a mask in the current circumstances. So is there a possibility that we could do this? Basically move the control location away and then have the same setup in the studio. But on the remote location, you would be sitting, for instance, with your uh, Rec Fusion Live, and then you would have a network connection between those two locations, sharing the same subnet. And that's what we solved using Peplink Surf Soho routers 
to do exactly this. And that I'll show you. So uh, in terms of how the network is connected, it's the same. You see network cables going out to the units. And then on the, rem uh, on, on the control location, you basically have a network cable coming into the RecFusion Live. And um, you also have um, from that location streaming to YouTube uh, via this VPN connection. Now, in the remote location, we have a challenge. We want to have multi-viewer output, uh, multi-viewer available on the control location. So we add a kilo view encoder from, uh, to NDI, and then um, that's the uh, output from the multi-viewer of the ATEM Mini Pro. Goes into the uh, kilo view encoder, NDI into the network switch, and at the control location, we can pull it up um, in, uh, on a laptop screen and see the multi-viewer uh, on the remote location. So that's one thing. And finally, we want to control the power of this location as well. So that's all the things that we are going through in, in this uh, demonstration. So basically, I want to do this demonstration right here. And uh, getting back to my kitchen table, that's exactly the configuration you see right there, all the devices. And uh, what we are looking at right now, just to give you an idea, is that I put in an extra PVC camera. It's not a part of the production. And it's a, it's a Panasonic camera. And I'm just looking, uh, in this Panasonic camera, I'm just looking at at the uh, web page of it where I see um, I can see the uh, the output from this camera and that's very useful to inspect the the, the scene that we're having here um, first I um, we're looking at the, the main preset so if we go down here in this corner you see this is the peplink surf Soho router and the the gray cable on the right side coming out of that goes into my internet connection at my home okay and then the, the first blue cable you see just next to goes to this camera I'm currently controlling. And uh, the other blue cable that is on the far left goes to the network switch on the location where all the other network cables go into, okay? You see this has Wi-Fi, it also, also has a 3G uh, modem sitting in it. So this unit is really flexible and um, can be used as an access point on the side. In fact, the access point part of it, this, these antennas are connecting to this one. So this device is a NetIO power cable. So it has uh, um, 220 power coming in in one end and then the other end is uh, an outlet of course and in between there's a relay and over the network I can shut this on and off and in fact I can do it from the Skahoy controller here so the RecFusion Live has a button right there which we'll be looking at later but it has you can see it actually reads out how much power it currently consumes so that's great now I want to move over to uh, the next preset so let's look at this here we have the ATEM switcher and um, out of this one comes, this is the multi-viewer output. It goes over to the kilo view encoder over here. And these uh, four uh, HDMI inputs go to my cameras and my laptop as sources. This is a USB stick plugged into the USB-C output here. And I am going to record on this one, okay? Then over here, we just have a laptop. And then in the back here, we have three robotic cameras that I can control from my RecFusion Live. And then over here, I have a multi-viewer for the uh, onset viewing of the screen and also the kilo view encoder right here. You also see a Skahoy tally box in this mix that brings out tally lights to the cameras, uh, as you um, see right here. And in fact, if I'm uh, pressing the cut button here, you can see that these tally lights are changing around. Um, because they are, they are listening to the state of the ATEM switcher. So that's the basic configuration of our remote location. Okay, so um, on, on this side of things, we have the RecFusion Live. And the RecFusion Live has a section for ATEM switcher control, and then it has one for PDC control. Now, if we go to the PDC control section here, then you can see I have a camera selector. So when I, for instance, move this camera here, you can see on my, uh, my uh, picture from the Panasonic camera, I'm actually operating a, a camera. And if I go to, to camera number two, it's a different camera. And camera number three is an Avonic camera over here, which I'm also able to move. Now, can I have the multi-viewer right here? Yes. As I showed you, you can see I actually have a Sienna NDI monitor that is pointed to my kilo view encoder right here. And the IP address of that one, now keep in mind, this is a shared network. I'm, to, to all these devices, 
they are all on the same subnet, really, okay? My office here and my home is on the same subnet. So all the NDI sources simply pop up here and are available regardless of where they are. And currently we are seeing the, end, uh, the uh, multi viewer from the ATEM switcher in the remote location. Okay, so one of the essential things is that how much latency am I getting here? So I have camera three selected and therefore you can see as I'm using the joystick, I'm able to, to uh, use camera number three. I can zoom in and out with this one. And that all, you know, you can see all this happening on the multi-viewer, of course. Now, uh, on the PDC Fly, you can see that, yes, I am controlling these cameras. And by the way, just for the record, um, I'm now recalling a preset here on, on the middle camera. Unfortunately, camera number one, that input on the ATEM switcher was broken when I got it. But uh, we had it coming in last week, so I didn't have a chance to change it. This is why you don't see camera number one, unfortunately. But we can have two other cameras, which is great. Um, we can adjust. Now, if you are interested in what we can do with the Rec Fusion Live and the PDC part of this, you will see that this configuration over here is the same that has been demonstrated so many times with PDC Fly or Rec Fusion live in other videos. So I, I just quickly want to show you that access to presets is toggled by pressing the lower edge of this button. So now you have access to presets, which I can recall if I, oh, I already recalled that. Here is another preset I can recall and so forth. And then I can select camera and then I can recall a preset on camera number three, so forth. If I press the upper edge of this bottom line, cycling through different uh, settings I can set on the cameras. And if I'm pressing the sides, I'm paging different presets up to 15 in this case. So that was the PDC part of it. Let's go and look at the ATEM part of, of this one because there's a lot of things going on in this section on the controller. Well, first of all, you can see that as I'm pressing uh, these buttons, I am essentially selecting preview and you see it's happening on the NDI monitor just next to me and this is actually real time. It's like we have one third of a second latency or um, um, not late. Yeah, well latency, but um, delay on the feed coming back to me right here, which is actually pretty okay when you do a PDC control and definitely also for using the multi viewer. Now, one unique feature, you won't find that on the ATEM Mini Pro is that I actually have a fader so I can make a cross dissolve from my Rack Fusion Live. And I also have a cut button. Of course, you have that on the ATEM Mini Pro and you have an auto button. So these are also on the ATEM Mini Pro, but the fader is a unique thing. So if you want that, you want an external controller. We have fade to black going on right here. And then we have, um, uh, I have a, a button here which will select my media player with uh, slide number one. This is something that you find inside the ATEM software control, which can of course run again locally from my office here across the internet connected to the ATEM switcher. So here you see I have a number of media things going on uh, right here. Finally, I want to show you that we can do recording on and off right here. So you, you can start stop recording on your ATEM switch on the remote location. And uh, we can actually see that happening if we uh, zoom in on the ATEM switcher. No, that was this preset. There you can see as I'm now pressing this button over here, you can see I start uh, recording. It's, it's uh, those two buttons on the ATEM switcher in the remote location that's uh, triggered by me pressing these buttons on the switcher here. In the second part of the video, we'll go much more into detail with the configuration that we are, we are seeing. Um, so I'm just showing the functionality for you right here and um, how that works. I want to bring your attention over to the first point here because that little tally lamp is one we designed to, to pick up TSL signals. Okay, this is not only ATEM control and PDC camera control, it is also a TSL, let me see, server or client, I forget. But the point is that this unit is sending out TSL messages to the Skahoy tally box, which is hidden here in the back. This is the Skahoy tally box receiving these messages. And apart from the tally lamps on the set, which is, uh, whoops, I'm sorry about that. These two tally lamps. Um, I also had this tally lamp down here, which uh, has a warning red light. I decided to make it so that when I activate recording and streaming, this one is turned off because then you can tell the talent that if there's a red light, there's a problem. If there's a no light, then things are just fine. And in fact, I also added a function that I can press a button here to signal 
uh, basically turning on and off green light uh, for whatever you want. You can you have to agree on the convention of this signal, but you can basically turn on and off the green light remotely as a like okay ready go or whatever the the code is for that. Now the final thing that I want to show before. Um, uh, we um, move on to the technology behind is that if I press this button I can actually turn off everything. So now look at the picture and you'll see in the remote location I'm killing things, okay? So, except the network switch of course because you don't want to uh, saw the, the, the branch you're sitting on and uh, then everything falls down but I'm actually able to turn it on and off and now I'm turning on everything again so you see things are booting up just nicely as I now press this button. So that's in, ex in, in and of itself exciting and if I go back to my slides I can show you a little bit of the insight behind this. So the Peplink Surf Soho is the device that I found was very easy to set up to, to create this network and this is the configuration that we are looking at. We have uh, all the devices that are interesting in this uh, context uh, shown here. You can also see that we have um, some data traffic going across the network. Uh, the ATEM is set up to stream with 4.5 megabits a sec. Um, the NDI multi-viewer requires 7 to 10 megabit a second and that sums up to about 15 megabits a second. Latency between my home and the studio was 5 to 10 milliseconds so that's pretty fine. In my office, I have a router connected, um, a sitting uh, guarding uh, the internet connection and then the office network. That's a ubiquity dream machine router, I think. Um, this one um, is not a peplink device. So I wanted to create a network between these two points and I wanted it to be as easy as possible. The, the, the thing I needed to do the only thing I basically needed to do apart from configuring the two units to connect was I needed to apply port forwarding of uh, two ports in my Ubiquiti router gating access to the internet so that uh, requests on these ports were forwarded to the a peplink device in my studio right here. That's all I needed to do. But apart from that, I found that it was really easy to connect these two units. I can um, show you how this works. I, uh, if I go to the um, to the website here of, um, let me just have a second. I need to log in here. Uh, something called In Control Two, which is a network hub for managing these devices. Basically what I did was I set up each of these devices um, with in control 2 and then they pop up in my dashboard here and this is where I can actually go into a configuration uh, menu. I can say configuration, I can create a uh, add a profile. If I do that I basically have a chance to to pick uh, this device and this device and I want to connect these two in a VPN and um, you can set encryption and stuff like that. So it was very easy to connect the two devices once they were registered with this uh, platform with my login and so forth. And another really great thing is if I go back to my dashboard here, you can see uh, if I go to the Surf Soho router, this is the one that's currently sitting at my home and you see that it's streaming about uh, 21 megabits. It's a little bit more than the 15 I mentioned, but that's because the Panasonic camera is uh, continuously streaming this picture, which is additional to what you would otherwise need. I just have that camera to give you like a um, spy cam into my configuration. Now, if we look at this, uh, that's not what I really wanted to show. I am able to, to take the remote unit in my home and uh, no matter where in the world I am, I don't even need to be on the VPN, which I currently am, I can click remote um, web management and then it's connecting to this device so that I am able to uh, access devices anywhere in the world. I can set up the network requirements. In this case, um, it's already connected, but really what I needed to do was um, go in here, I could um, select a profile that it should be connected to my router at the office that I wanted to use um, DHCP uh, from the office network with this unit and so forth. So all this configuration was uh, very easy to do um, by simply having this dashboard that easily brings me to the configuration interface of the individual devices. And I like that a lot because again, I'm the grandma of networks. I don't know a whole lot about this. So I wanted it to be easy for me. Now, the final details of 
of creating this connection, um, I would like to cover in a different video, maybe a screencast, maybe an unboxing video. This is still unknown because I'm waiting for some more devices to come in. So it's likely that we'll see more um, guidance on that. Um, and I also have some slides to share with you, but that's going to be in a different video. The main point here is to show you that we can do remote location with Skyhoy hardware, uh, having um, remote cameras and video switches um, and control it over the internet. And that's part one of this video. In part two, we'll take a closer look of the actual configuration that we use to get all these things going. Like for instance, uh, having the tally lamp um, turn on or off when both recording and streaming was active at the same time. So some of the finer details of this configuration is saved for part two.